Okay, uh, hi everyone. I'm starting to say my long overdue tutorial on how to make a rag quilt. And if you're not familiar, if you didn't see my intro to rag quilt about five months ago, I'm so sorry. It took me so long. I just said we moved uh, like a month later and I've been settling in. And even my batting, my quilt batting is still put up, um, just still in boxes. So um, I'm not using any batting. And generally in California, uh, well, where I come from in California, it doesn't get that cold. So I like to make my rag quilts um, without batting. But this is what a rag quilt looks like. Um, this is a baby quilt I had made for my son, so it's a couple years old already. And as you can see, the more you wash it, just the funner it becomes and it gets more frilly um, on these little areas here. And now that he's bigger, he looks at this and he tells me that's Jolly Roger. And it's kind of funny because he watches Peter Pan and Jake and the Neverland Pirates, so he calls it Jolly Roger and the Anchor and stuff. So he, he still uses this and loves his blanket. Um, what you're going to want for your blankets are flannel. Um, and if you want to use batting, you're going to need some batting also. Depending on the size you're making, I'm making a baby quilt, uh, is what I'll be showing you in this actual tutorial for a friend of mine. Uh, the patches are going to be larger than this one. This one, I believe, has, I want to say like five inch patches. Um, the one I'll be making has six inch patches, so uh, as far as the blocks themselves. So the larger your block, the less you're going to need to get the size of quilt you want. Um, this one, like I said, smaller patches, and I did them in. Um, six by seven so I think is what I did I can't quite recall it might be seven by seven two four yeah so this is a, a square it was seven patches long and seven patches wide or blocks as they call them I just call them patches but um, and on the back the quilt looks perfectly aligned like any other quilt it's just nice and lined up okay um, so we'll get started. I just want to kind of show you what the quilt looks like and right now what I'm going to do in this uh, section of the tutorial is just show you what you're going to be needing and um, just so you can get your supplies together. So this is just how I keep my um, sewing supplies. This is basically a Hello Kitty train case but it's for you know other things um, generally probably for makeup but this is how I keep all of my supplies for my um, sewing. One of the basic things you might need and if you really want is one of these chalk markers. Um, this might be a Prim Dritz one, I'm not sure what brand. You don't need to have this, it's not 100% um, needed, but what you're going to do with this is if you decide when you put your patches together that instead of just having an X holding them together, if you want to do like a heart shape or a star or something else decorative, you might want to have one of these chalk pins that you can write on your fabric, like if I write on this it's going to be washed away. You can barely even see it. But it's going to wash away when I do wash my fabric. So this is a chalk pen with um, dressmaker's chalk in it. And you can find things like this at Joann's. I'm not sure if Michael's carry it, carries it. Walmart has it. Um, just um, so, like I said, if you need to do more advanced designs, you can do that. Um, pins, of course. I have lots of pins. This is just a few. To hold your blocks together for when you sew them, that you have better placement. Um, I think that's all that I have in here that you're going to be needing. I knew I already had another one. You're going to need a rotary cutter or just scissors. Rotary cutters are much easier to work with to cut your fabric because all you're going to do is, um, along with your rotary cutter, you need a couple things. You're going to need a ruler, which you're going to need a ruler anyway to measure your fabric. This is an OmniGrid ruler. It's a pretty large one. I think it's 6 by 24 inches. Um, they sell them in lots of different sizes. Um, the larger they go, the more expensive they are, but you can get a smaller one, and they're always on sale, it seems like, every other week. So you can always get these for, on sale. They carry them at Walmart. Joanne's usually where I buy mine. I have several different sizes of these. And then you need a self-healing mat or a rotary cut cutting mat, they call them. This is one by June Taylor, and I think this one was super cheap. It was like $10. Um, and you really want the largest mat you can get for your money because um, if you get a smaller mat and you go to cut your fabric, you're going to end up having to move the fabric down or whatever it is to accommodate for that smaller mat. So if you can get a larger mat, at least um, that's the longest, maybe 24 inches, a 36 inch mat is even better because that's generally your yards of fabric come, well, generally a yard, a yard of fabric is 36 inches. So if you can get a good 36 inch mat and then go from there, um, that, that would be preferable. Um, if you don't have these things and you just have scissors, well, you can go ahead and cut with scissors. It's just going to take a little bit longer and maybe your blocks aren't going to come out as straight. But for this type of quilt, um, this, this straight edge of your block isn't that important because you're, it's going to be cut up anyway and then it's going to kind of wash away. So this is a good beginning quilt because you're going to learn some, some about quilting or about piecing your paper, your pieces at least and it does, it does it's not too difficult, okay? And then there's a little fudge factor, a little fudge room in there if you kind of mess up a little bit, okay? 
So I'm going to put this. You're going to need thread coordinating for your fabric for your front and, um, well, for the front and the back of your fabric, obviously. Um, whatever it is that you're going to choose. I'm probably going to be using this beige and some green because I've already done that um, with the other patches. I've sewn a few of them just to get it started. And a sewing machine. I have mine back here under its um, case. I have a brother. I got this at Costco actually a few years ago and it's a really good machine. I have several machines. But this is the one I use when I'm just doing regular old sewing everyday kind of stuff. And the fabric. That's the fun part. So the I always get my fabric pretty much at Joann's. They are, it's always going to be on sale. I like to say always, like apparently, but it's generally it's on sale. It's the flannel print fabrics. Um, sometimes they call it snuggle flannel print fabrics. You don't want the pajama uh, flannel because that has a little different consistency to it. This is just flannel, what they call flannel flannel print. And they have plain flannels. I like the printed ones because even the one that's like this is considered a print. Um, so you're going to need, what I'm making today, like I said, is a baby blanket, and mine, let's see here, um, my baby blankets, I usually like to make them about either five blocks by six blocks, you know, wide, or large, or six by six would be a square, or six blocks by seven blocks, which would be another size rectangle, and I have some notes here my son kind of drew on them. Um, generally, five by six is going to be a little bit oblong. A six by six is going to be a square, and a six by seven is going to be a little bit longer. And since my patches are going to be six inch blocks, um, my the one that we make for the tutorial will actually end up being thirty by thirty six inches. Okay, so the blanket's not going to be huge; it's a baby blanket. If you want it larger, all you have to do is add more blocks one way and more blocks the other way. Okay, so we'll talk a little more about that when we get there. But if you're making this blanket, you'll need about a yard and a half of each fabric. So what I mean by that is you're going to need two fabrics that coordinate. And so I've chose this little monkey print. It's cute. So a yard and a half of the monkey print fabric and a yard and a half of this green like tie-dye. And I always end up getting the tie-dye one just because if you get a plain color, it's kind of flat. It's funner to have some movement in your quilt. It's just a cuter print. And they have this stuff at, Co at Costco, <laughs> at Walmart, and at Joann's. Um, Hancock Fabrics, um, around here have Beverly's, they have it too. Everyone carries, it seems like, this kind of fabric. And this comes like in the yellow and greens and blues and purple, pink, reds, all this kind of weird, like, tie-dye looking thing, or mottled fabric, should I say. So, like, this is the blue one. And it, it seems to look the same at every place you go. So this is the blue one. There's the green. I actually have yellow and pink and purple somewhere else in here. But, um, and that's what I chose to coordinate with this little monkey print. So if your fabric generally comes in 44 inch wide fabric, and if you know about fabric, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not sure, um, when you go check out your fabric on the bolt, uh, there'll be this big huge white thing in the middle here, it's called a bolt. It'll say if it's 44 inches wide or 60 inches wide. And I believe this is, I can't really tell in there. Okay, so if it's 20 inches, so this is 44 inch fabric. So on a 44 inch wide piece of fabric, you need a yard and a half of each fabric, okay? So what I'd like to do is kind of um, probably stop there for right now because what we'll be doing next is cutting our fabric and then we'll start sewing. So I think this is a good place to stop and if you need to, you know, pick up those things from the store, like I said, you need a yard and a half of each of your fabrics. Um,